I am Alan Whitcoff of MapleSoft, and today I'd like to talk about Maple's numerical solution capabilities for delay differential equations. Maple has a wide variety of numerical ODE solvers, including solvers that can be used for educational purposes, such as the classical and Ellis ODE methods, high accuracy or high precision solvers like Gear and Taylor series, and three general purpose solvers that can handle problems with cusps, events, discrete variables, mixed differential algebraic systems or DAEs, and as of Maple 2015, now also differential di delay differential equations. First, what are delay differential equations? These are systems of differential equations where one or more lags appear in the dependent variables of the problem. As a first example, we look at the equation for the simple harmonic oscillator. This example has two independent harmonic oscillators, x1 and x2. And a delay has been added for both, tau1 and tau2. For illustrative purposes, we will solve these equations <coughs> with no delay for x1 and a one-tenth of a second delay for x2 and compare the solutions. So to solve, we simply call dsolve, evaluating the DDE system with the appropriate delays and then produce a plot with ODE plot. The blue curve, without the delay, is the familiar result for the simple harmonic oscillator. But the red curve, with the tenth of a second delay, shows a growth in the solution. It turns out in this case that the delay has a similar effect on the solution as adding a velocity-based growth term to the ODE. So this is the system with a velocity-based growth term here with a coefficient of tau1. If we solve this system and plot the solution, we see that the effect of the delay is very similar to the effect of the amplification for, from the growth term. This effect of the delay is quite specific to this problem. In many cases, the addition of a delay can instead introduce kinks and singularities in the solution, which we'll see more of in later examples. So now that we've got a basic example out of the way, we'll look at some implementation details. The three general purpose solvers have a built-in C1 interpolant, three solvers being RKF45, Rosenbrock, and CK45. This interpolant makes it straightforward to compute the values at a prior time step, as long as sufficient history is maintained. The initial conditions use a constant assumption, meaning that any history data prior to the initial point is assumed to be constant and set to the initial value. This is not as restrictive as it may seem, as it's straightforward to modify the problem to have any history that's desired. The amount of delay stores used is fixed, but can be adjusted through an option. Variable delays are supported, but a maximum delay needs to be specified when the solution procedure is obtained. Delays that are smaller than the current step size are handled via extrapolation from the last computed time step. And finally, derivatives of delay terms are also supported, but only first-order derivatives, as the interpolant is only C1 continuous. Now on to another example we look at a modification of a well-known predator-prey model where the delay is used to accommodate resource consumption differences between young and adult members of the population. These are the equations for the model. And we can solve. In the first instance, we solve with no delay. And we see that in this case, the population stabilized in a relatively short time, staying constant after that. addition of a small delay, the population still stabilizes, but it just takes a little longer. A slightly larger delay is more interesting. As the dynamics of the problem change, and instead of stabilizing, the populations enter a cycle. And an even larger delay changes the pattern even further.
The next example shows that multiple delays can be handled by the solver and also describes how to use delay history. So this is the delay equation we want to solve. It has two delays, a one-second delay and a two-second delay. Now the initial condition we want to apply is that the solution value is sine of t for any t values less than zero. Now by default, the solver uses a constant assumption. So in order to get variable initial conditions, we can do so by describing them through a piecewise on the delay terms. So we see that for the y, for the t minus 1 delay term, when t minus 1 is less than 0, we specify the variable initial condition we want. Otherwise, we use the delay. And we apply a similar method to handle the two-second delay. Solving the system shows us something we were mentioning earlier, kinks. The solution has a kink at t equals 1 and a visible kink as well at t equals 2. These kinks correspond to the points where the computation of the delay transitions between being computed from the initial value and being computed as a delay of the actual solution. Now, the kink at 1 and the kink at 2 match up quite nicely with the delay of 1 and delay of 2. But the kink at 2 isn't just a direct result of the 2-second delay. But the 1-second delay also has a contributing factor as these singularities propagate. So there'll be a, a kink at 1, 2, 3, and so on. But the delay differential system in question here has the effect of damping out these kinks as time evolves. As a final example, we consider a model from this paper from the Journal of Sound Vibration. This model represents the effect of delay in human response time in correcting side-to-side -side motion of a two-wheeled suitcase. And there's a URL here. The delay differential equation is given here. And it involves several parameters weighted related to the geometry and the weight of the suitcase. We use values here with initial conditions that specify that the suitcase begins with both wheels touching the ground and no initial side-to-side -side velocity. We can evaluate giving our equation but retaining a variable delay at this point. Now, there's an additional factor described in the paper that the energy loss of a wheel striking the ground when it moves from being on one wheel to the other damps the velocity. And we can actually handle that in our numerical solver through an event. This is the event description, and it says that as the angle passes through zero, the velocity is reduced by a factor of 913 over 1,000. The first thing we're going to look at is how the solution behaves when there's no delay in the response time. And this is what we get as a result integrating over 400 seconds. And we can see that the range of theta is between, pretty much between, uh, plus and minus 1. So the suitcase is tilting back and forth not overly much. However, the introduction of a 0.1 second delay in the response time changes things significantly. One moment. In this case, we can see that this 0.1 second delay creates an unstable motion that grows without bound, which shows that addition of delay to a system can significantly change the dynamics. I hope you all find the new delayed differential equation solving capabilities in Maple useful and interesting, and information for a numerical DDE solution can be found in the DSolve Numeric Delay help page. Thank you.